Um, right, we're going to move on from that. So uh, what other lessons, of course, have companies learned of any since the collapse of Lehman Brothers? From on that, uh, joining Digma myself in the studio, Chris Pilling, CEO of uh, Compliment. Chris, thanks very much indeed uh, uh, for joining us. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, what, what has been the company takeaway? What have we learned or not learned a year on from, from the, 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 the month, the last year? Well, I mean, I think what we're hearing from, uh, from our, uh, our customers, and our customers are the banks, but specifically they're the compliance people within mm. the banks, um, is that there has been, um, there has been a change in attitude. Um, there, uh, you know, and whether this is just because we're, we're suffering from the hangover right now, and so, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's easy, to, um, it's easy to, to, to react when you've got a, uh, when the pain has been mm. most recent. Um, but we have seen, I think, um, uh, compliance people coming up uh, closer to the boardroom. Um, what we're hearing is that there is a more comprehensive, or at least an attempt to take a more comprehensive enterprise-wide uh, view of risk. Um, so trying to connect the different silos within the business. Um, and so um, on that front, I mean, I think there are encouraging signs. Uh, having said that, it's very, very early days, and we haven't seen, you know, mm. there's a big raft of regulation coming, clearly. Um, and uh, we, you know, how that's going to impact, well, so nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, um, just to, to clarify, you, you guys provide regulatory information and, and an insight into the financial services sector. And look, we've had this, this report, we've had a, a poor compliance culture, a cycle of greed leading to, to market failure has been some people's comments. So um, how, do you, how do you change that? I mean, first of all, was that right? And well, I mean, I think I mean, we, um, we uh, interviewed... Um, uh, David Demura, who is the chief compliance officer at uh, Lehman, um, mm. right in the middle of the uh, of when it went down, and his his view was was that um, it, you can see you could see the problems coming down, but actually nobody wants to listen when you're in a bubble. Um, so when you're at the top of the market, uh, nobody wants to get out before the top, um, and I guess that is where you know regulation's got to come in because the private sector is not necessarily it, I mean, good at regulating it's not, itself. Yeah, it's not way. more regulations. I mean, look, we, we, this is—I mean, this is the most regulated. The financial services is the most regulated part of the world. Well, it's right? not, it's not about more. We need better and better enforced. For instance, beforehand, for Northern Rock or Bradford and Bingley to say, "We'll lend you 125% of the value of your house." By the way, you write us the letters and tell us how much you think you earn. And at the end of the day, no questions asked. Don't be surprised when human beings do it. Now, there were regulations in place to stop that, but no one stopped it. Why? Politicians wanted people to feel good. The, the, the boards of those building societies were being told, it's okay, the money coming in on the wholesale market won't stop, and it's cheap. And at the end of the day, the profits were good. That is the, you're so right, that is the role of regulation at that point. But the regulation was there. It yeah, was just right. not enforced, and it was not good enough. What we've got to do is ensure that President Sarkozy and, and, uh, and Chancellor Merkel don't get their way, which is, you know, hi, let's regulate the one in... I know, let's really regulate it but in the way they're the first just, London. But they're just playing politics, of course, aren't and they? We've got to I mean, make sure you know, it doesn't happen. Mm, that's right. but, but there's a big difference between saying... Uh, more regulation and better mm. regulation. And That's right. I mean, there's a lot of political grandstanding mm. at the moment. I'm not sure that the, uh, a lot of what's coming out is, I mean, it's being driven. There's a lot of elections coming up. Uh, what you've a got to do they is... Don't, they don't want to rush into having to raise the capital requirements of their banks in Europe at the moment. Well, that's right. It was a competitive yeah. issue. But yeah. there's also an issue of what you actually do to apply this within the banks. Because I think you're right. The regulation was there. The regulations, it's not... I, I don't think it's more rules that are required. It's just better application of those rules. It's better understanding of risk within the organizations. And, of course, there's got to be... I mean, everyone talks about the global approach. But... There, do, there has to be um, a view of risk across all of the different uh, organisations that uh, these uh, regulations actually, are looking at. I've been critical of Adair mm. Turner, what he said about social yeah, usefulness. Yeah. I will praise him on the fact that I don't think he's a big champion of more regulation, actually. I think he actually is saying what we've got to do, we've got to make it work better, and then increase the capital requirement in a bank. I think, I think a lot of it he will do on the basis of, if you like, self-regulation coming out of the need to have more money put on one side. You can run bonuses on that basis, you can run lending on that basis, you can run casino banking on that basis if you get your capital adequacy right. And I think in that respect, I think he's right. Just just one thing, um, if, we, if the Conservatives do win next year, George Osman's already said that he's going to basically get rid of the FSA or it will become something else. How, how difficult is that potentially? Uh, just dealing with the fact that everybody working at the FSA at the moment knows they may not be around in that form in a in a year's time, and then how, if you change the organisation that is in charge of regulation, how di how much does it put back? Yeah, what you're I, mean, to I, do? I think it's very difficult, and I think it's uh, if we take that approach, uh, I think what the industry needs right now is a period of stability to mm. get uh, to get its house in order. 
if we take the approach, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, shooting the FSA sort of six months before, you know, election is, I, I think, is, uh, was the wrong thing to do. Um, you know, we need, you know, we do need a stability. And the FSA actually as an organization needs the support of the politicians because it's got a very important job to do. Um, there's going to be a lot of complex regulation coming through. It's going to be highly political. And if you look at it from our point of view, uh, you know, as we're re mm. as representing the compliance people, the last thing they need is huge rafts of regulation, total change, because they've got to, they've got to actually, they need some stability. They want to be able to actually improve regulation within the firms and, and get it right. And so there should be compliance person on every board level, right? With well, with it, it, it does need to get, I mean, certainly mm. risk and compliance yeah. needs to be taken more seriously at the board uh, level. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and directors need to be able to, to listen to that, because, um, you know, if they don't, uh, we are going to see the same thing happen again. Chris, thanks for that. Chris Pilling, CEO at uh, Complinet. Uh, Lord Digby Jones is uh, sticking around. Still to come, we'll hear from m and boss Stuart Rose about how businesses can help inspire the nation's future workforce.